Welcome to Three Witches and a Druid Podcast, a Canadian podcast about paganism in today's modern society. And now, Three Witches and a Druid Podcast presents... The Thieves of Dagdad. Ha Pooba came up to us one day while we were sitting in the field, minding our own business. We look him up and we look him down and we say, Hey man, what be this and what be that? And why are you gonna stare like that? Well, he just looked at us, he kind of stared and he said, Hey man. Lost suppository of the great and secret knowledge of drowned Atlantis, <gasps> which only a chosen wow. few are privileged to share. Would you like me to initiate you? <laughs> Standing in the feast line, listening to the piper tune up, trying not to drool in my shoes, because I got this condition, see? I'm like Pavlov's dog now. Every time I hear bagpipes, I salivate. Haven't gone to the tattoo in years, but I digress. Anyway, just then, I felt a hand on my shoulder. It's the guy behind me in line. He said, do you know who I am? I said, no. He said, I'm the king. I said, but Charles, what about your mother? He said, no, no, not that king. I'm the king return. Well, my eyes went wide and my hair stood up in the back of my neck and I felt filled with a sense of wonder and awe and I dropped to my knees and I said, Mr. Presley, welcome to our festival. But he said, no, 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 not that king. Don't you recognize me? I'm King Arthur from a past life. <laughs> That's when he started in, swearing up and down, nobody knows where Lynn couldn't even tell me where the hell they'd been, but they got the plan to see the world comes in. First they take Manhattan, then they take Berlin. He said he would have liked me to meet a few of his folks, but Gawain works weekends trucking for coke. Percy couldn't come because he was flat broke, and Gwen had her driver's license revoked. Lance is in the bushes trying to find where we dropped and smoked. What do you want come on when I come along? And you got the person that you got the ring. And you got the ring. And you got the ring. And you got the person that you got the ring. He's a person that you mean each day. She's just an ordinary girl. Within whom it's said the forbidding mysterious powers of the dark unfurled. At last. One day I asked her why she replied The street lights go out when she walks by
thought to myself, that's terrible. What would it be like channeling a public works nuisance? Walking down Spring Garden Road on a Tuesday night like a tiny rolling block road. People bumping into each other, falling through store windows. Squad cars jumping the curb, knocking over fire hydrants. And the switchboard would light up at the local detachment. And the dispatcher would pick up the line and say, Come in, number 10. Come in, what's the problem? And they'd say... All hex breaking loose. All hex breaking loose. All hex breaking loose. Baby, 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 baby. Woo! All hex breaking loose. Hey, hey, have you heard the news? All hex breaking loose. She overloads and the blows off you. All hex breaking loose. Every day and night, every night and day. All hex breaking loose. In the streets, you can hear them say. All Welcome back, everybody, to Three Witches and a Druid podcast, where we sit around the Zoom meeting once again and talk about our experiences being pagan in a mundane world. I'm Margo. And I'm me. I'm Gwen. And I'm Brian. So just a heads up before we get into this episode, we may be touching upon various adult subjects because we're talking about Beltane. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Let's all get drunk and go vegan. <laughs> now, anyone who doesn't know anything about belting, it is one of the four Celtic fire festivals. It's a bit crude way to put it, but as my wife says, fire for luck, belting for fuck. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's all get drunk and go naked. Yeah. <laughs> It is the festival to kind of launch the beginning of summer. It's all about fertility. It's all about the growing of the seeds, be it whatever seeds you want to grow. (laughs) What are some of your guys' experiences with belting? Well, once again, in Nova Scotia, it's usually too cold for any kind of outdoor shenanigans. It is too cold. At this stage, we've begun to plant the garden. Certain seeds are in the ground and doing their thing. We have our strawberries out now and various bean seeds in. This early? Oh my goodness, wow. Yeah, yeah. I do have some things growing in my kitchen window. Yep. I've started uh, tomatoes and foxgloves and uh, sunflowers in my window. Awesome. On a future episode, we'll, we're gonna talk about pagan gardening. And uh, the guests we have on, there's all sorts of stuff you can plant like a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of things I love about Nova Scotia. The weather is not one of them. And I miss spring. This spring has not been terrible, but it isn't our best season out here. And so because of that, I have planted over the years a lot of spring flowering bulbs. So I have crocuses and muscari and stuff that come up, daffodils, narcissus that come up through the grass in my front yard and I have them scattered throughout my property just because this is, can often be really gray and cold and wet and miserable. So those kinds of things are coming up. I haven't done a lot of planting. My garlic is coming up. My fall planted garlic from last year is poking through, but I haven't planted any seeds yet. That uh, No, I definitely haven't planted anything outside. On that on the note of garlic, we planted it last year and left it over the winter and it didn't turn out. Back to the, the point of Beltane being fertility. Fertility, we're not only talking about fun times between individuals, but fertility in the sense of creativity and that mode to like get up and do stuff and create now that the sun is coming out. Not today, today is ugly as hell. When it gets nicer out, the sun comes out and it's warm. It makes you want to do more. Yes, I've gone to many a Beltane 
plantain where there hasn't been a leaf on the tree because there's really very little in the way of even buds out yet. But there is something about dancing that maypole in the sunshine, even if the ground's kind of squishy that, I don't know, I guess you've been doing it long enough. It is sort of a refresher of, okay, the light is the end of the tunnel for the rummy weather right you know spring things and new ideas all of that gardening no i never put anything in the ground before mid-june ever because we always have a frost in the beginning of june third week of june so i don't put anything in the ground till then i find that there is something about beltane and if you look on the wheel of the year it is directly across from Sawit, which is our time of death so life and death you know life and death are directly across from each other so i find that a lot of the time I'm in bulk, we still got snow and it's below zero and it's horrible. To me, May is the real spring holiday. Yeah, that's fair. Not necessarily summer, but here in Nova Scotia, that's spring. It, it, to me, it is. It's not the beginning of summer to me, personally. Yeah. That's the beginning spring because it was snowing here yesterday like what the hell <laughs> yeah, it was. but like this coming tuesday it's supposed to be 17 degrees and sunny all day yeah the, the weather in nova scotia is bipolar it's terrible yeah, deal with the fall spring every year <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i can always tell like working retail i can always tell the first spectacular day of the year yeah because you would kind of think, oh, everybody wants to be out and shopping and active and doing... Nobody's at the mall. Nobody's shopping. Everybody is outside. They just want to be out of their house, yeah. out of their work, out of wherever they've been stuck in all winter and just spend that first glorious day that you don't need a jacket and you can wear your flip-flops. Although I've seen flip-flops quite a bit already out and about. Yeah, that first day, as far as any kind of Retail business is always a complete write-off. Right. It, it's to yeah. be expected. Oh, of course. I mean, I don't blame them one bit. I'd be right out there with them if I could. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of the Maypole earlier, we used to have a fairly large Beltane ritual, do we not? I was going to say my favorite group sort of Beltane, community Beltane thing was the MPGFA had like a reunion or something over the Beltane. Or they had a Beltane fair. That's what they had. Yeah. It was kind of an all day thing. There was a ritual. There was some crazy games. They had two partner type style games with dad on the bottom and a child on the top or two, however you wanted to partner up. And so somebody was riding around on somebody's shoulders and they would be all fighting over a banana, which, you know, there's your fall <laughs> symbolism. And whoever at the end of the thing, whoever held the banana and maintained uh, their mount on their speed was crown making. And we always had a, a May Queen and there was vendors and all kinds of local stuff going on and it was a family friendly event i was gonna say you're kind of leaving out one of the most important parts where dave used to build catapults and trebuchets yes yes he that's his thing he loves to do that so he had catapults and trebuchets you know they would use that as a fundraiser for distance you know who could shoot at the furthest and stuff for the organization that's a really big selling point for us is that if you're interested in a religion that involves trebuchets and shooting catapults <laughs> Yeah. Paganism is for you. That's right. <laughs> That's <laughs> right, hey? Yeah, crossbows and bows and arrows and, you know, sword yeah. fighting. Sword fighting. Yeah, they had the pool noodle. They also did stuff with pool noodles, remember? And they, you know, oh my goodness. All in good fun. One year we had a guy that offered to be our green man. And he was in costume all day and handing out trinkets and, and candy and stuff. And... He wanted to be in charge of his costuming. And he had made himself this fabulous mask, green man style mask. And he wore all green clothes and he dyed his skin green. But he did it with food coloring. And it took him literally 30 days to stop being green. <laughs> he used to work for me years back and he would come to work each day less and less green than the day before. He's like, I oh am my bathing gosh. so much, you know, so, trying to soak it <laughs> off and scour his skin and stuff. So please, people, if, do not do this at home. Do not use green food coloring to, to dye your skin so you can be a green man. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was quiet the whole time. But he was a really good green man too because he didn't speak. So it was 
trying to figure out who that person was under all those <laughs> leaves was quite a challenge as well. Those were really good celebrations. And I think part of it is shaking off the effects of all of the winter weather and stuff. People are just ready for foolish shenanigans. Speaking about the maypole, we always use it in conjunction with Beltane. And I maypoles have a long history, apparently like hundreds of years, but it's only really been associated with Beltane in the last maybe 50 or something, you know, part of our expression of that, right? It was the Victorian Folklore Society that put them together. Oh, okay. I, I will speak up there, believe it or not. I'm not from Nova Scotia. I'm from the Annapolis Valley originally. And I learned to dance the maypole. Believe it or not, there is another dance. There is a proper dance you can also do. Yeah. When I was in elementary school, we learned it in gym class. I was going to say we did that in, in PEI too. Yeah. And I mean, there's a big May celebration in Russia and everything else. Yes, I agree. But it's, if you go back, it's the Victorians that yes. put attach the maypole to May. Yeah. Even Gardner talked about this as a fire festival and pushing cattle yeah. and, and yeah. using it for cleansing and protection and fertility and jumping the fire for luck for the upgoing. It's like you say, the opposite of Samhain, right? So there's a lot of parallels yeah. there. Yeah. But in a folkloric and cultural and traditional sense, we use the maypole and it seems to fit. So I understand why it would be part of our belting now. Yeah, the Apple Blossom Festival down in the valley, the opening ceremony, so to speak. I remember my brother was part of the opening ceremony, Dance in the Maypole. Very cool. Yeah, so, <laughs> at the Apple Blossom Festival. But I mean, stop and think about that. Maypoles, apples, yeah. blossoms and fertility and, and all of that. They, did, they just thought it was cool. They really, really aren't thinking about the history of what they're doing. Yeah. It's just fun. Right? But I do love a maypole. I won't lie. The first time my daughter danced a maypole, she was in one of those little snuggy things. <laughs> she was six weeks old. I'm doing the maypole with her and those little, you know, that little snuggy thing when she's just little. So we'd love a maypole, but COVID will not allow such a thing at this time. As a Druid Grove, uh, we use a maypole in our ritual, actually. One of the things is we, I think we've had the same maypole for quite a while now. It's stored in someone's shed. We write after affirmations on a piece of paper and normally when we do that we usually burn them in the fire because we like burning stuff but at Beltane we wrap them in the maypole oh nifty. oh very cool and so the next year when we unwrap the belt uh the Beltane pole our affirmations are still there and uh you kind of see if your affirmation came true or not wow yeah isn't that interesting yeah. now I, I think that's just something we kind of made up on our own I don't think it's Got any more. Yeah. Oh, sounds great no, though. The, That's wonderful. Yeah. We started to do a little bit of a recreation of the, the the Beltane Fair because we have so many children. We have a bit of a day out at one of our members and we have games and barbecue and we have the maypole and all that. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So, because uh, that's one of the things you often read when you're reading stuff about Beltane. Oh, how do you make it child friendly and all these sorts of things? Because people really dwell on when they say fertility, that sex aspect of it. And it's one of the easier ones I always find to to make child friendly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. To make it family friendly. Yeah, because you get to go outside and, and all of those things. Yeah. I have been to one or two on private property where things like that were occurring. And that wasn't until after dark. Mm -mm. You know, it was, you know, in the day you were doing your, you know, regular May Day type things and there was Maypole. And later that night, you'd fire jumping and then drinking and then whoever wanted went off to the woods. They disappeared. Kind of. So sort of like any other weekend in the summer. Yes. Children are often in bed by then. <laughs> Only this time you say it's yeah, sacred. It's like any other weekend in the summer. <laughs> but, um, uh, but that's usually later at night. Yeah. It's usually later at night. Kids are gone to bed by then. Everyone's just know have been drinking and having a not that you have to drink i just you know enjoy alcohol but i really really enjoy too the thing about beltane i mean i enjoy the symbolism of all of our holidays but i really do like beltane and the wild wood part of it mm -hmm. that symbolism you know that the maiden chases the stag through the wood and all of that i really do enjoy that wild wood concept 
That brings to mind, you know, because of, again, of a certain age, many, many, many years ago, Red Miss of Avalon, and then it was put on TV, and they have this big belting, and it's the pagan king-making ceremony for King Arthur, and they and he dresses in a um, dag head and then chases the priestess, right? Has this whole hunting scene that's set at Beltane and the fires and all of this sort of thing. And I remember working in the prison and we're talking about this a few years back. And, you know, anybody familiar with Beltane? They're like, a couple of them, I've seen Miss of Avalon. And I think, <laughs> how do we approximate that in the prison? I'm like, what the heck is pairing off? But yeah, it was a very visceral symbol of the wood. Yeah, the sacredness of it, eh? For druids in ADF, one of our virtues is fertility, but it's very focused on the idea of creativity, being able to keep yourself inspired to be creative. It's it's not just about the fun bedtime. It's more to it. Yeah. It's not just getting drunk and going naked. <laughs> Wait, that, that's definitely that's definitely up there. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, too cold in Nova Scotia. It's like, yeah, you can say you want to go out in the woods, but by the time 11 o'clock at night comes, it can be two or three degrees. You're not, you, might, you might sneak yeah. indoors, you know, <laughs> because it's so damn cold. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. I think really this is the holiday most associated with, you know, although we're a very, I would say sex positive, sort of in any way, shape or form, religion it there's no shame attached to this sort of thing and i can't think of another sabbath that would be as associated with that as belting i don't think any of the other festivals have a, a focus on it belting is definitely for that but one of the bonuses to paganism is that we're so sex positive anyway yeah it doesn't need to play in it it doesn't need its own day yeah yeah i just finished a book and it had a, a very short chapter on uh sex in paganism and it explains sort of how some of the monotheistic traditions are like this is how it is and that that's it anything outside of that is sinful and then it had an explanation of how pagans view sex and it's like anytime anywhere as long as it's consensual you do you yeah. And that was the end of the chapter. There was no more right. to it. A little paragraph, eh? You, yeah. A consensual adult. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the one thing, though, it doesn't need its own holiday, but there is one aspect because there are sometimes problematic things when you focus on strictly heteronormative stuff, which Beltane can be associated with, and it doesn't have to. But I do think it is important maybe because sometimes we need to be reminded that our bodies are sacred and that part of the equation. And, and always you hear in quotation marks, woke people, oh, you're a sacred being in a meat suit. But I think for pagans, this is more than a meat suit. To use maybe um, IT type terminology, this is your hardware by which your software gets to work in this world. And this is how we experience the world. And it's all sacred, it's interrelated, and we can be made to hate our bodies or question our bodies or fight with our bodies with gender and with sex and to have it associated with belting whether that's a new thing or not it really doesn't matter it suits the symbolism and it suits our focuses about the sacredness of the manifest world and our bodies and our place in it yeah i don't know mm -hmm. that's a good point because it is a lot of the time and i've been thinking a bit about belting lately and a lot of the time as we get older, because, you know, three of the four of us are into our 50s, it can remind us to fertility because, you know, past the childbearing years, it can remind you that your body is still an OK thing. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I was thinking about that. And especially since, you know, I'm older and chubby and on and on. It's like, but you know what? I'm still part of the whole wheel. I'm still part of it. My body is still something that I'm using and that I still should appreciate. It has made me lately think about, okay, you can't sit around being upset about your body deteriorating. It's time to make the best of what you've got with your body. Right. That kind of went from one thing to another there with me recently. I was thinking about it. Something that I don't think as a society we discuss enough, and I just finished a book, uh, Idiot's Guide for Paganism, and there's an, entire, there's an entire section about moments in our lives. And one of the things that was brought up, and I feel... It's something we've 
kind of lost touch with a little bit, I hope I don't offend anyone, is that there is a stage in our lives where you move on to be the crone. A lot of the times people are like, oh, I don't want that. I want to still be young and vibrant. But being a crone is just as important and beautiful in its own way as it is through the rest of the cycles of life. I think we've all come to the place where we are embracing that aspect of our lives. Right. Yeah, as much as I might live my life like I'm still a 23-year-old, I'm well aware that I am moving into my crone stage. Yeah. And part of that is that I have lived a lot of experiences. And this podcast is one way of sharing some of the knowledge that I've acquired through those experiences, not saying any of them are good or bad or better or worse than any other person's. These are the experiences that have formed who I am now. And I do have this wisdom that I'm willing to share. Right. And I have these experiences I'm willing to share. Well, a crone can still live your life like you're 25. <laughs> Certain things you may not want to do, like drinking till midnight, but that's a whole bit. <laughs> <laughs> there is a point where you begin to bestow your wisdom and it's incredibly beneficial. Yeah. I think the best parenting advice I ever received was from Maeve, who said, don't accept advice from anyone who has a head of kid in five years. Yeah, and call. you were 100% right. Anyone who was trying to give me advice who was older was way off the mark. Yeah. Yeah, it's nutty. So I, I, how that sort of wraps into Beltane is the understanding that just like any other thing with the fertility and the rebirth and life is that understanding that life is a cycle. There, there's more to it than just being young and fresh and fun. There's all sorts of stuff going on. It is. And today, like, you know, media and I have a 19 year old and, you know, any billboards, unless it's about retirement plans, it's all young people. It's like society is geared towards the profession perpetual belting, youth and beauty and, you know, all of that doesn't mean I can't be a vibrant person. That marketing machine is focused on making money. Yeah, and perpetual belting to make money. Exactly. And that's unfortunately the machinery of our corporate lifestyle. Like, yeah. And, and that's something that paganism tries to get away from. And it's, yeah. I think it's great in that sense. Now, here's a quickie though, because we've had so many rainy, horrible cold Beltanes, I find I've had many wonderful indoor Beltanes to, to set your mindset if you have to, because it's pouring rain outside. To, you know, you can do things inside. So don't, I don't want anyone out there to think that if you haven't got this giant maple and you, know, you haven't got a blazing bonfire that you can't have a great Beltane. So don't think that. You can still have a great Beltane indoors if it's pouring rain that day in five degrees. You know, adapt it to the inside. You're going to be okay. As with everything, I think as with all of our uh, rituals and celebrations, I think you're right. There's no one way and there's some ways that can be just as fulfilling as others. And the limitations can be that you have uh, mobility challenges. So a romp through the woods does not work for you and your cane or your wheelchair. Or we have everyone here in this province has weather challenges and uncertainties and stuff. So yeah, there's lots of ways of making it special. Exactly. Absolutely. So everyone, have a have a happy bell day. And thank you very much for tuning in. We'll be back in two more weeks. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact us on our Facebook page. And if there's a place where you can give us five stars, we'd certainly like that. Any sort of comments you might have. And until next time, everyone, merry meet. Merry heart. And merry meet again. Let's Let's see. See. This has been Three Witches and a Druid Podcast. Thanks for listening.